Today is the last day they're going to be harvesting the salmon here at the Dungeness Hatchery. And I hope to get video of them artificially inseminating the fish eggs. Wow, it's a beauty. That is. Wow. Yeah, and now the salt water would probably be four or five pounds heavier. What uh, species? Coho. Coho. With male. Male, okay. Yeah, the females will too, but males tend to get more pronounced. More of a hook on the nose, okay. Eyeballs are missing. Yeah. But that's, that's the hand. You can see the oval shape, and, and she's really bagging good. Okay. Ready to spawn. It's quick. Yeah. In the wild, they just die and get all fungus up. And, yeah. So, so we're, this is an effort to save the salmon, increase their population. And although it's not all that comfortable to watch, it's necessary. They're going to die in the wild anyway. Yep. are a three year fish. Three year? Okay. The eggs were taken today, this year, will hatch it, it's a 2022 brood year, they'll hatch in 2023, they'll spend 18 months in the hatchery, and be released in, in May of 2024, oh. and they'll come back in the fall of 2025. Do you name them? Yes. <laughs> The sissy bucket. Warm you up. <laughs> so where do they stay for a year? In this uh, bird cage covered place just up here. This okay, well, marine pond up there. We saw a uh, kingfisher trapped in there this morning. Yeah. <laughs> There's a kingfisher trapped inside of the net that's protecting the fish, but not from this guy. As a general rule, most of the fish return to their natal stream and within a few hundred yards where they came out of the gravel. Amazing. At, at what point they imprint, I don't know for sure, but, but about 10 to 15 percent will stray and go to another river or another stream. And it just helps nominate the way to spread the genetic It's interesting. Is this the last harvest for the year? Uh, I think we're going to do clean care of next year. Oh, okay. And then we'll clean the pond out. So, uh, Steelhead come next, then, huh? Uh, very few. Uh, the scientists only allow 10,000 acres of steelhead in the east here in the Dungeon Nest. They used to be 50,000. The lady who wore a green hoodie is a, a temporary employee, Jeff, and a green coat's a hat for her. Dungeness Complex Manager, uh, Rick in the white hoodie is uh, year round, I can't remember the other guy's name, and so one, two, three, four, there's four hatchery guys here, we are after high school kids and volunteers from the local people town English fishing club. Wow. Everybody helping out for the same cause. Yep. Thank you. Oh, 591,000 eggs so far this year. My goodness. And you count each and every one of them. Yep. <laughs> so they take one female and one male uh, inseminate the eggs and then count them over in the building. At least I think that's what's going to happen. Are these all females? These yes. are all females. The males will go over in, on that side. Okay. They don't get well.
Beautiful. Three thousand one cent. That you're doing? I'm collecting ovarian fluid for uh, virology, so for disease surveillance. Oh, okay. There's all kinds of steps in this process. These are the male salmon that will be providing the sperm for insemination. We'll do those five just to get, and then we'll start over. We're going to count the eggs. Yep. One, two, three. Yeah. Where's my egg counting app? <laughs> that was fascinating. So you mix the uh, several of the buckets together? Well, we do five. We do one and one, and then we do five, all five into one. So if one of the males isn't fertile, ah, the eggs okay. are going to be fertilized. Average coho female has about 3,000 eggs. That's 15,000 eggs right there. Roughly. On our way to the building to count the eggs. Drains off the excess sperm and fluids. Three and a half pounds. After he, after he gets the, the, the weight, then he'll put them into one of these trays. They stay in these trays till about February, then they'll bring them out here, they'll dump them in this raceway, they'll tumble down and go through this pipe down here, okay. into that bucket. All of the eggs that weren't fertilized, the membrane will rupture, they'll absorb water and turn white. And then a bunch of us volunteers show up in February with the the tweezers when we start picking out all the oh all my the dead eggs. The tweezers. <laughs> it looks like we're pre preparing something uh, for breakfast. Yeah. Seven eight caviar. Uh, 
Poor man's calculator. For counting the eggs? Well, it's 100 eggs. Oh, kind of like an abacus? That'd be 300 days so far. In the wild, roughly 1% of the eggs are going to, you need 1% to maintain the run. Anything over and above that, you get more fish back. But uh, in here, the hatchery, they run about 95, 96 plus percent wow. survival rate on the eggs. A hatchery is the most efficient spawning tributary in the river basin where it exists. So he counted 300 eggs and he weighed them? He weighed them. And, and, and so he knows, he can calculate the weight per pound, or number of eggs per pound. Okay. And then he'll... Uh, then he'll just weigh them at that point. Yeah. And by using the math, he'll determine an estimate or close accuracy as to what... Yeah, pro probably within you know, 200, or, you know, give or take. Wow. So Three, three pounds per tray. About 8,000 eggs per tray. That's nice. Here we go. So where are we? <laughs> so we're in the incubation room. Okay. And the trays that he's filling out there will come in here. This is an old iodine bath. And the eggs will sit in that for an hour to kill bacteria, fungus, whatever might be on them. And then the tray is pushed in. So it looks like you know, he's, got, he's got a whole bunch of trays set up. <clears throat> the water comes in out of the river about it. It's the rest of the crew comes in. Okay. So this is a iodine that they put the eggs in with for about an hour? Yeah, about an hour. Go soak in the iodine bath for an hour. This was the end of the take last week, the 29th of November. So this stack is done. We'll start a new stack with today's eggs. And they'll do, let's see, what we got? One, two, three, four. There's seven, seven, seven trays per stack. The top tray is empty. It's kind of a final settling place for silt and pine needles or whatever. The water comes in at the top. It's running about three and a half gallons a minute. It goes into the top tray, overflows, goes into this tray, this tray. And then it ends up going down, you can see it falling down in the sump underneath there. And then it drops down into the trough below everything and goes back in the river. It's a, a gravity-fed flow-through system. It's the river, this little tube with the blue-green is a formula. And, and they, they get about a 15-minute drift every day, once a day. And it goes through all of the trays. And that helps keep the fungus and mold or you know bacteria or whatever keeps that under control. 
which is why they can have a 95 plus percent survival rate in the hatch. Six million eggs in this and facility? If, if all of these trays were full, so here's seven trays at 8,000 eggs per, that's what, 56,000 eggs per, per stack. Their capability in here is, is for, for six million eggs. So this is a tray ready to go into the uh, iodine? After we've pumped and shocked the eggs and picked out all the dead ones, then they go back in, into the tray. But they go into the tray with a Vexlar screen in there. And that's, that's to simulate gravel in the river. And, and so if somebody goes into the incubation room, and they turn on the light or they bump the stack or whatever, the fish are going to be separate. If, they, if you don't, they'll all run to a corner to try to get away from a perceived threat. Oh, and they'll geez. suffocate each other. Oh, my. Belly grows together. Then they're ready to be put in the outside raceways. And that's, you put them on the cart and you push them out there and you throw them in the raceways. And There's a lot more to this story to be told. He's bringing off excess of air and food and stuff. April, so spawn in November, but the, and it's because it's temperature units. So a temperature unit is every degree above 32 degrees for a 24 hour period. Okay. So for a total of. And if the, the river's running 37, I don't know what the river's running, it's going in now. One hour in the iodine. Yeah. Kill any bacteria? Yeah. 